Hey, hello, dear diary. Today is Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. And I want to tell you about this uh, bug I found a couple of days ago in a type annotation. A type with a bug. Okay, so here's the issue report, and I'm not going to jump into that yet. Let's go back to this program. Yes, so here's where it all started. I'm working on this little test case, and it's for the transient semantics for typed racket. So I'm working on this language, typed racket shallow. Shallow has transient semantics. OK, great. And what's going on in this program? We have an untyped submodule here, which declares a little pair, pair with two strings in it, and then provides that pair. Then we import that untyped pair into our typed outer module. And we say, OK, this, this thing called stirs has the type pair of symbol symbol. So that, that type is a lie. We know it's really a pair of strings, but we declare it as a pair of symbols. And we also import the typed uh, rack unit testing library. Now here's where the action happens. We have a test case named A, and we're looking for an exception. When we take the first element of this stirs, we're hoping that the language stops. It says, wait a second, the declared type says that I should be getting a symbol out when I take the first element of the pair, but what I really got was a string. So stop the program. So here's where I started a couple of days ago. I had this uh, test case, and I wanted to make sure that the shallow semantics really does throw an exception here. So let's run it, see what happens. Oh. Now from test case A, we have a failure inside check exception, which says no exception was raised. It also says two out of two test failures, but let's not worry about that. OK, no exception was raised. That's not good. So we took the first element here, and nothing bad happened. That's kind of funny, I think, because if I put this at the top level here, I should get an error. Yes, transient assert. We got the string A and we were expecting a symbol. So stop the presses on line 14. But somehow when it's inside this lambda, it, you know, when it's inside this test case inside of a check exception inside of a lambda, there was no error. So that's not good. Uh, the shallow language should be rewriting all the type code. So anytime we have an elimination form like this first, we get a check. So what to do? We need to dig into the, we need to dig into the language bracket, private, transient rewrite. Great. So we have this uh, module here on the right, which is going through type code and trying to add these uh, defensive shape checks, we like to call them. And I knew that there was this idea of ignored code. OK, so when the type checker runs, it annotates some expressions as being ignored. And there's a good chance that test case is making some ignored things because test case is a macro that's going to output untyped code in the end. We got a little bit over here. Okay, so let's jump to this ignored stuff. So the first, first step in debugging this was to get rid of these two cases. We should not be ignoring uh, ignored code in the shallow transient rewriter. We should keep going through it, keep recurring down. And uh, if you find anything that has a type declaration inside of that ignored expression, because it could be a large thing, then add a check around the type thing and ignore everything else. I mean, so keep stepping through till you get to the bottom. So with that change, we run the program again, and now we have a surprise. So what I'm hoping here is uh, 
After removing the ignored parts, we step through and then we put a check around that car of stirs. But no, we have something here completely different. Transient assert value true does not match the type false. What's the source of that? I can't even read the source. Well, what do we do next? Go to here is always to look at the expanded code. We're going to run the expander on this test case bracket on the left and then dig through the output to see what are the runtime checks that we had inside. So let's go. Rack right, expand test case. Okay, now let's open that up. And we're looking for transient assert. And we were expecting the type false. And we really got back true. There, this is the one we want. Okay, so pardon the mess, but we have transient assert with some value here and some type here and the printed version of that type is false. So where are we? We're inside some kind of a with handlers and it's asking a question if we have a exception fail and then otherwise check if we have an exception test. And this is the expression that, that our uh, we have a transient check that says this expression can only return false, but at runtime it's returning it true. So why does it think that it can only return false? That's from the type checker. And that type checker is the same for normal type bracket and for this uh, shallow transient type bracket. So that, that, that's funny, uh, that shouldn't be happening. Why does the type say that it should be false when it could be either way? Well, after a little more digging, I realized the problem was not in my code, but I had to jump up to rack unit. So let's open up the library. The rack unit testing library. It comes with a, so there's this untyped testing library and it comes with a few type annotations. And that's where we need to go right now. Rack unit typed main. Yeah, this is the one. And we were looking at, we have test case here on the left. So we want test case on the right. And we see there's a little more in this file than just types. Because these things like test case are macros. And you're not allowed to use an untyped macro in typed code for very good reasons. So the macros have to be copied over or re-implemented. And then also given type annotations. So we have this typed test case macro, and it doesn't do too much by itself. It sets up a parameter and then goes to test begin, which is from right up above. Define syntax, test begin. And now this is what we're looking for. I mean, I'm, I'm sparing you the pain of the trip, but here's where we ended up. We have a with handlers inside test begin, and it's got this predicate here. This first lambda is a predicate saying, if I have an exception E, do I want to take this first branch or not? And I want to take the branch if I've got something which is an exception fail, which is not an exception test. And now the type checker seems to think that this exception test thing can never be, can never be true. It's got to be false. Now, I First of all, what are these things? Exception fail and exception test. Well, these are questions about different structs that E could be. Exception fail is something from your standard racket. Let's just look up the docs.
Yeah, so exception fail is some built-in thing. And it's a child of this parent exception struct. Okay, fair enough. And now what's exception test? That, that comes from rack unit. And I think it's declared in this file. So let's, let's jump down at the bottom right and look for exception fail. No, it's not. No, 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 exception test. That's what I want, exception test. Yeah, okay, and that is. Exception test comes from rack unit. And in this file, we have a declaration for it, which says, okay, we're gonna, we bring in this type struct exception test this is also a child of the exception struct, and it comes from the rack unit library. That's great. So now our question up above, well, the idea must be, hey, I'm looking for things that are fail exceptions, which are not also test exceptions. Why does the type checker think that the second one, exception test, can always be false? And uh, if we're asking it in the first place, there must be some reason for it to be true sometimes. But why type checker seems to disagree. And the reason for that is the this parent thing that we're just talking about. Let's, I think a picture is the easiest here. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. Let me open up on the bottom left. We said uh, we have exception, exception fail, and exception test. The first two of these are built in. The second one is from rack unit. And what's the uh, inheritance structure? In the docs, it says that exception fail is a child of exception. So exception goes down to exception fail. And then over on the right here, it says that exception test is an exception. Okay, so we have one parent and two children sitting around. And this is the clue for why that second test has to be false according to the type check. We ask the question X and fail on the top left. If that's true, then that means we're in the, the child branch. And there's no overlap with X and test. We, we started at the root X and or whatever, no, whatever it is. If it really isn't X and fail, then we can't, we can't possibly get to test. Well, what we have here kicking in is type brackets occurrence type, which says I look at the result of a predicate and the predicate is tied to a certain type, like X and fail is a type and it returns true. I have a filter going forward or proposition going forward that I can, I can narrow down the type of my input argument. So we know a little more about that E and that's reflected in the type system. Yeah, so once that is true, this test has got to be false because of how this uh, it's a, it's a different child. It's in a whole other part of the world than X and fail. So if we're already in the fail part, we can't possibly be in the test part. Yeah. Okay, but then why, why do we have this second question in the first place if it's not supposed to be there? Let's go even deeper into racking it. Let's go back to the uh, untyped part and see where's the declaration for that struct X and fail. Again, I'm looking for X and test. Okay, a few options here. 
<laughs> it's probably in base for test. It's probably in base. Over there. You know, you know, lib. Base. X and test. Okay, there's a comment here that says X and test is an exception, and that matches our type annotation. And down below we have the definition, and uh oh, the definition says that X and test is an X and fail. Okay, so let's refine our picture on the left. Um, we said inheritance here, but this is inheritance according to types. We also have inheritance according to uh, struct slash the truth. These are the real definitions. And that's a, a line with X and X and fail, X and test. And now with the second picture, the true picture, according to the structs, the predicate makes a lot more sense. We're asking, let me use the picture instead. The, the question that we're asking up top is first, are we in the X and fail part? And then are we not in the second child, X and test? So what we're looking for is the, The predicts looking for <laughs> fails that are not test failures. So the idea is if we have a different failure, we want to propagate that upwards. And if it was a test failure, then the rack unit library wants to catch that and uh, make sure it was the one that the user was looking for with check exception. So all of this to say is that our type annotation here, uh, line 275 is the wrong one. We need to change that to X and fail, and we should be in business. So let's compile this again. Oh no, we're not out of the woods yet. Test case racket, line 14 expected a function that takes in anything and returns anything, but we really got a function that's looking for uh, exception fail and returns nothing. So we, we fix this type. We, I'm gonna close this one. And we're also all set with the bottom here. Unfortunately, test case dot racket line 14 is not very helpful. Actually, yeah, that, that's a different issue. We should probably fix the source locations in this macro here. But the problem is with this second function. It's got this annotation saying, I'm looking for an X and fail. And it's returning nothing. And that matches our given type here. given a function that takes in X and fail and returns nothing because it raises its own exception. And some, somehow we expected any to any. Well, why is that? Because the type for this thing, the first predicate is now funky. Before, before with bug, the whole function was equal to this X and fail E because that second thing was always gonna return false. And if that is the simplified body, that means that the predicate has the same type as this X and fail huh? built-in predicate. So that means it's a, it's a type that says, if yeah, I'm gonna give you back X and fail if I'm true. All this is to say, having a more specific type for this first predicate lets you have a more specific one for the the second, the action down below. And if 
type track, it can't figure out a specific type. Then the action has to have this simple any to any type. So we've got to fix the type on our predicate lambda. Let's do that with a type annotation. Uh, the type that we had before, oh man, little guy. The type that we had before is uh, any to Boolean with filter on it. X and fail. Actually, I hope that's how you write the filter. Let's, let's compile this one. I'm not sure I got the syntax for that. <laughs> Mismatch in proposition. Okay, I did get the syntax right, but we have a type there. So the type that we want is no longer a good type to describe that uh, function. I'm expecting something that when it's true, guarantees that my input was an X and fail. And when it's false, that I don't have an X and fail. But what I'm given a predicate that's not, if it's false, I don't have an X and test. No, if it's true, I don't have an X and test. And if it's false, I do have an X and test. Yeah. Well, Uh, my simple way of looking at this is we, we're looking for X and fails. We want a positive predicate. Uh, when this lambda returns true, we definitely have an X and fail. And that's what this uh, keyword plus means. And when it's false, this is where the, this is why the old type breaks down. When it falls, when it's false, we might have some weird thing with some other kind of uh, value. Like you might get a number in here that got raised. But we could also have a X and fail. We could be in the child branch, but we have, okay, we returned false because we found an X and test. That also happens to be an X and fail. So that's why we can't say for the negative part, we don't have X and fail because we might. But for the positive part, at least, we're in the X and fails that are not X and tests. OK. So this, this type, this uh, positive recognizer for X and fail should work out. And we don't, I don't think we care about the false, false case. We would just fall through the with handlers. Okay, now we're back in business. There's no more internal errors from cracking it. And we see we still have no exception raised. So let's let's expand the test case one more time and look at the source for that. And I think we can just open that up. Okay, we're back to this mess. Uh, and let me just jump to the bottom. Yeah, so here we are. We have uh, a lot of wrapper boilerplate code, but then in the end, we have an application of car to something that looks like uh, our stirs variable. And there's no transient assert sitting on the outside of that. So that's another problem. And now we're back to my problem, not racking its problem. Well, it turns out in this wrapper code, it might be this function here. We have an untyped function. What I mean is a, a lambda there that doesn't have a type annotation around it. And so this is problem two inside my rewriter. Problem two for the day. Type annotation, that's what I want.
on So here's the old code. If you find a function or a case lambda and it doesn't have a type, then just ignore it. But the right answer is to recur through. So we really want this code down here that was hidden. Okay, little guy. So we say uh, first recur on the body of the lambda, which comes from over here. Recur on the body. Put all your syntax properties that were on the body onto the newly written thing. And then reconstruct the lambda and also keep the syntax properties from that. Okay, save. And now by going under this function, we should be all set. We should get the extra assertion that we're looking for, and we shouldn't have any more problems from the library. Okay, so yes, mission accomplished. That, that was the total end of my debugging story, but along the way, we had this type annotation. Inside rack unit, we had an incorrect comment, and more importantly, an incorrect type. And then to fix that, we also had to fix the type annotation inside of that handle predicate. And thankfully, okay, this fix has been merged. So, phew, we made it to the end. I, in summary, what did we have? There was a mistake in a trusted type. And that mistake had been there for, I don't know how long, but at least a couple of years. And because of the mistake, that's, yeah, conversation. Yeah. Because of that mistake in the type, there was nothing wrong with the code, even though the, the type checker thought that the second part was useless, that you could just get rid of it. So the only reason that we were safe here is that there was no optimizer to go through this, this type code and to simplify the and to only check for x and fail. Thankfully, because there was no type optimizer, we were safe and we didn't have something that was real confusing to the code. But who knows? I mean, in a couple of years, we might have had that optimization and still had this faulty type. So I think it's very fortunate that going through and implementing this transient semantics, which has these spot checks almost every time where you have a type annotation. Going through with these spot checks helps keep us honest, but we have a trusted type declaration. And it's caught several bugs in the past, and I think there'll be more to come in the future. This is probably not the last one. Okay, so with that, that's the end of my debugging story. It's Ben and Ben and Alice signing off.